Ranveer Singh is Don. Mad what? Only Shah Rukh Khan. He's a good actor, no? Shah Rukh Khan. Shah Rukh is Don. You mad what? Only Amitabh Bachchan. No, but I think he has potential. Amitabh Bachchan. <laughs> The ritual of giving opinions that might ruffle some feathers and cause massive debates in the comment section, this time it may really get ugly. But before I start, I wanted to ask a question that has polarizing takes. The major criticism Satya Prem Ki Katha is getting and something that I wholeheartedly disagree with is how the film has regressive undertones because Kiara Advani's character needs a male saviour in order to find normalcy in her life. This concept of how a man can only create an atmosphere for her where she feels individually confident and the best version of her former self. I actually think otherwise. In both films, Dear Comrade and Satya Prem Ki Katha, it's the empathy and understanding nature of the girl's love interests that provide them a safe space. They don't push them to a corner, pressurize and reprimand them to come out with their story until they personally feel compelled to do so. Individually secured to come out publicly rather than being forced by anyone. And I feel like both films help in creating an atmosphere of empathy and tenderness for the women so that they individually come out as they deem fit. And this is not a man-woman thing, but beautifully expressed in the climax of Dear Comrade. How that comrade can be anyone, your partner, your parents, your siblings, and this was essentially the point of the film. Versus portraying a woman as weak and being dependent on a man to be rescued. This is where the discussion becomes layered when you think about the manic pixie dream girl versus male saviour debate. Why is it that we criticise the manic pixie dream girl like Geet? Leila and Tara, whose only purpose is to make the man's dream come true and in regards to Satya Prem and Bobby, consider the narratives to be sexist too, when they help in guiding the women. So when the men are helping out women in stories, it's the male saviour complex that deems women as incapable of doing the same themselves and when the women help in guiding men, their purpose is reduced to become babysitters and it's sexist because their personal goals are not focused upon. I find this to be a futile argument and would love to know your thoughts regarding the same in the comments below. Getting right into the topic, here are 8 very unpopular Indian movie opinions you may hate me for. The Ranveer Singh criticism is too harsh. With the release of Tum Kya Mile and the justifiable criticism of the lack of chemistry between the leads in the music video, one started to go above and beyond in criticizing Ranveer and how he might be a misfit in the romance genre. The criticism, however, went way out of hand when the discourse became about his lack of ability as an actor and the internet started to reminisce about the Imran Khan stint as a lead in Bollywood. Ranveer has, with great conviction, done both rom-com and a romantic drama with Band Baja Bharat and Lutera respectively. And I think the main reason why the visuals may not have had a great impact really has to do with the styling and look in the film. In a recent photo shoot for Tiffany, Ranveer Singh looks extremely slick and the internet were up in arms thinking about why wasn't he precisely styled this way for the movie. The debate also becomes nasty as Ranveer has presumably said yes to Dawn 3 and while my take is reserved until I see the promotional stills or a teaser, it's quite hilarious that my father's generation could never accept Shah Rukh Khan playing Dawn after Amitabh Bachchan and now we become those geezers who refuse anyone else except Shah Rukh playing Dawn. I think only time will tell but I really can't stand for arguments that dismiss Ranveer's ability and range. He might be looking off in the song but he isn't a bad actor. Casting 90s heroes and heroines again In our recently released episode regarding the age gap between actors, an interesting comment sparked my attention and it was how fans don't want to accept their favourite heroes ageing so in order to satisfy the masses, the male heroes constantly fight what is inevitable, which is time, and create a perception of still romancing young heroines and having the physical ability to do stunts and kill hundreds of goons with ease. But I feel at least from a romantic perspective, it would be welcomed with open arms if the male heroes actually star opposite their female counterparts from the 90s. Shah Rukh with Juhi Chawla like in Bhutnath, Akshay Kumar with Shilpa Shetty or Ravina Tandon, Amir with Rani like in Talash, Salman reuniting with Madhuri in a Rajshri production. These pairs look organic and I don't think anyone will have an aversion to this if it becomes a reality. The reason why Shah Rukh Khan and Kajol did not work in Dilwale is not because of the pair, but because it was a bad film. 
Sexual scenes and the male gaze. One of the things that I have often ignored but became abundantly clear, especially when the anthology Lust Stories released, is the stark difference in how male directors and female directors capture sexual scenes. When you look at how the female body is portrayed in the short stories of Amit Sharma and Sujoy Ghosh, there is a laser focus on the physical assets and attributes of the female body. But when you look at the Konkana Sen Sharma short, the concept of lust stays paramount, getting its point across while still staying aesthetic and not having this hyper focus with sharp zoom ins on the female body. This also becomes clear on how the clips from these short films get circulated on the internet and how intimate scenes shot through the male gaze are often distributed the most and shared as they cater to men. It was an interesting point to be noted on how one can get the themes of sexuality, lust and physical wants expressed without being really in your face about what they're fantasizing about. A compelling story can easily have a tonality of Gandhi bath because of which people will only see it for the clips rather than what they're trying to convey. Shahid Kapoor might get repetitive. I hope that Shahid Kapoor after Kabir Singh would not be portraying a mostly irritable, on the edge, angry man in his films. And even though Jersey came as a welcome change, I could not help but notice how the personality traits of his characters in both Farzi and Bloody Daddy mimicked similar qualities. The way Shahid's character Sunny reacts to Yasir Chacha stopping him from deals is eerily similar to how he reacts to Sanjay Kapoor's insistence on checking the bag in a drug deal. I've been an ardent supporter of Shahid's versatility from his soft boy era to more compelling dramatic roles, and I hope he doesn't typecast himself to this personality type. The physical problem no one addresses. This might get a lot of flack as I'm going to talk about stars that have the most loyal fan following, but a glaring issue about the film industry and its physical demands from actors is how tough it is to return to a state of normalcy after a grilling schedule where you were at your peak physically. If you notice Salman's filmography, the actor looked extremely agile, youthful, and lean and kick. But because of the intense demands from the schedule in Sultan, he became extremely bulky for the role. This often takes a toll on actors physically, where it becomes extremely difficult to return back to your lean former self, especially when you're in your 50s. Then, 15 days shooting, do a flashback, then come back to the present, then go to the introduction, then go to the climax. So, because Ali has never gone to the gym in his entire life, so Ali does not know that it takes a good three and a half, four months okay, to lean down and to bulk up. Prabhas and Rana Dagupati also have undergone several physical complications post Bahubali just because of the grilling regiment the schedule consisted of and how it's almost impossible to keep the size and shape around the year. This irreversible ramification of putting your body through the most intense physical regiments is not talked about enough in the film industry. The out-of-state white skin obsession in Tamil and Telugu cinema with the case of Tamil and Telugu commercial cinema especially, an ongoing and much needed debate has been about why a majority of the female actors not native to the state or its language. While some of the female actors have learned the language over the years, majority of the heroines in Tamil and Telugu commercial cinema are not well versed with the spoken word nor are they representative of how the population of the state looks like quite contrary to what the male actors represent. There is a clear preference of a lighter skin tone if you look at the likes of Kajal Agarwal, Rakul Preet Singh, Rashi Khanna and Ada Sharma. And in an alarming interview, Telugu director Teja said, when it comes to big ticket masala flicks, there are a couple of norms. A heroine should be fair, even if she can't act. Another priority is that she should dance well. Then again, she shouldn't perform better than the hero because then she will overshadow him. When we talk about representation, we often speak about whether gay characters should be played by gay people or a differently abled character should be played by an actually differently abled person. But from a very basic point of view, I think representation is the most lacking where heroines from Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Tamil Nadu are actually not from the state. Avneet Kaur had a better acting debut than most. Iku with Sheru and the discourse around it was less about the acting performances and more about the uncomfortable age gap between the two leads. It's actually justified because the creators never mention the age difference between the actors in the story and neither does it become a core theme of the narrative. Imagine having a literal elephant in the room of a boardroom meeting and no one ever mentions its presence. That's what it felt like. My point being, if you do want to acknowledge a silver lining in this mess of a screenplay, you'll realize that Avneet puts forth a solid performance for her acting debut, much more confident and convincing in her dialogue delivery than most Hindi film debuts we've seen. And I think around the noise, this went unnoticed. I actually respect Tiger Shroff a lot. For all the flack that Tiger Shroff gets for his lack of expressions or inability to take up any roles besides the action hero who jumps, swings, flips and beats up bad guys, 
I actually admire him to sticking to his strengths and trying to push the envelope in that department. He considers himself to be a mazdoor who really has to put in work to make it look effortless on screen and I prefer an actor like Tiger who doesn't pretend to have exceptional range and forcing down our throat this perception that he is a dramatic actor. Well, I don't consider myself uh, a star. I don't consider myself an actor. Uh, I consider myself a laborer. He sticks to the assignment of killing it in action set pieces and contrary to popular belief I actually look forward to what he can do in Ganpat and Bade Mia Chote Mia just as a bonus point koi Farhan Akhtar ko bolo yaar thoda focus direction pe hi rakho ye jeele zara cancel hi ho jayega warna and that was the video guys write down in the comments below whether you have some unpopular opinions as well please don't forget to follow me on instagram the handle is right in front of you follow me at jammy pants4 also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead thank you for watching